the power of COVID-19 will diminish around the world in 2022. But this pandemic will continue to haunt people and nations sporadically if we don't pray. The World Health Organization reports a significant decline in global COVID deaths. It says just 9,400 fatalities were reported last week, which is nearly a 90% drop in figures since February. Japan's finally lifting travel restrictions for the first time since the start of the pandemic. And here at the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport, many travelers can't wait. This mask will no longer be mandatory in public places and schools in England as infections levels have uh, leveled off there in large parts of that country. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says restrictions are being eased because government scientists believe the surge of infections linked to Omicron have peaked. That big change is coming for travelers entering the U.S. The Biden administration lifting the COVID testing requirement for international travelers coming here. Starting tonight after midnight, anyone flying into the country does not need to provide a negative COVID test. The CDC now lifting that requirement. This comes as we see a record number of travelers. The TSA now regularly screening more than 2 million people a day, and it expects to screen 3 million at some point this summer. The global economy will begin to stabilize in 2022 with nations like USA, China, Israel, UK, Germany, France, Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand, UAE, South Africa, Nigeria, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, and others leading the way. Investments will grow in Africa and Asia significantly. So a key economic indicator released today shows the U.S. economy grew in the third quarter. The new data shows the gross domestic product increased at an annual rate of 2.9% in the third quarter. Now this rebound comes after six months of decline and looming fears of a recession. China's Communist Party held its 20th National Congress from October 16th to October 22nd. Gross domestic product in the world's second biggest economy rose 3.9% in the July-September quarter year-on-year, year, but the 3.4% growth expected. Taiwan's economy grew 4.1% in the third quarter of this year. The growth rate beat most analysts' forecasts thanks to stronger-than-expected domestic consumption. But global inflation and ongoing COVID lockdowns in China continue to put pressure on Taiwan's exports. Uh, the Australian economy grew by 0.6% in the September quarter to be 5.9% higher through the year. Uh, this is a robust result in the face of pretty serious headwinds coming at us from around the world, as well as the considerable and compounding cost of living pressures on Australian households and businesses. Uh, the New Zealand economy is pretty resilient. We've got very low unemployment, low public debt. Uh, we are in a strong position, but I recognise it's pretty tough out there for a lot of families and households at the moment. South Africa's economy has rebounded strongly in the third quarter of 2022 after contracting by 0.7% in the second quarter. Now, the economy saw a growth of 1.6% in the three months uh, ending in September and thereby also avoiding a technical recession. Now, according to latest GDP report by the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's uh, gross domestic product grew by 2.25% year on year in the third quarter of 2022, marking the slowest growth since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The 7.6% expansion in Philippine GDP in the third quarter came as a surprise to many. The Philippines is now in second place in terms of GDP growth already reported by major ASEAN economies for the period, in spite of most analysts forecasting a slowdown due to challenging circumstances. In 2022, the division and strife between the right-leaning groups who make political gains mostly in America and the left will be felt in many parts of the world, especially in the US, UK, the Philippines, Brazil, and Chile, which will magnify Satan's agenda around the world. Believers can defeat this satanic plan by using love as a weapon against evil rather than using political propaganda tools. We do not fight against flesh and blood. But we begin with Republicans officially winning enough seats to take control of the House. The Republican majority will be slim, but it will likely be enough to block much of President Biden's agenda. This morning, a sigh of relief for Democrats, against the odds retaining control of the Senate for two more years. Four days after the election, Nevada finally clearing most of its mail-in ballots. And when the dust settled, Catherine Cortez Masto edged out her Republican opponent, Adam Laxalt. 
Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer sounding triumphant. Over the last few weeks in the U.S., we have seen the House hearings about the assault on the Capitol, an attempt on a Supreme Court justice's life, and a right-wing extremist caught plotting to disrupt a Pride uh, event this month. Now, the American people are seemingly more divided than ever as political violence reaches a fevered pitch around the country. Brazil, a nation on edge tonight. The run-up to the presidential elections marred by violence and concerns that if far-right-leaning President Jair Bolsonaro loses his bid for re-election, he may not accept the result. Victory for the no camp. Chilean voters rejected the proposed new constitution by a far wider margin than polls predicted. They said no to what would have been one of the most progressive constitutions in the world, with a focus on social welfare, gender equality, environmental protection and indigenous rights. Natural disasters and calamities will continue in almost every continent in 2022, but believers can minimize the impact through faith, prayer and world evangelism. We have entered a new era, the end times, and divine prophecies must be fulfilled. Overnight, wildfires burning across Europe. Fires in the UK intensified by extreme heat. London stifled by record-breaking temperatures, a high of 104.4 degrees Fahrenheit, the hottest day ever in Britain. Outside London, the town of Wennington set ablaze. Houses completely consumed by flames, engulfed in smoke. Hundreds of firefighters desperately battling to save what they can as people are forced to evacuate. 60% of Europe and the UK is under drought warnings, driven by a combination of heat waves and lack of rain. Germany's Rhine River is running dangerously low. France declaring the drought its worst on record, with drinking water now being trucked in to more than 100 towns as fires rage again in the country's southwest. The extreme conditions threatening food production in Italy and Spain especially the production of olive oil. The Category 4 hurricane slamming into Florida's southwest coast this afternoon. Ian making landfall right near Fort Myers, 3.05 p.m., winds of 150 miles an hour. One of the strongest September hurricanes to strike the U.S. in decades. Already tonight, catastrophic damage, storm surges that have destroyed homes and wiped away cars, devastating winds, and now the rain. Up to 30 inches of rain expected in some places. The death toll from this summer's historic monsoon floods in Pakistan now tops 1,100 people. Dozens died just this past weekend. Over a million homes are damaged or destroyed. Roads are washed out and farms are swamped. About one third of the poverty stricken country is underwater. Storm victims are living in camps where airlifted meals are in short supply. The Red Cross in Nigeria is warning that communities affected by extensive flooding there could soon face outbreaks of disease. It's believed that people whose homes have been submerged are now living on boats in an attempt to protect valuable roofing materials from looters. Let us pray against preventable and unnecessary deaths and destruction in many nations in 2022. 130 people reported dead after a pedestrian bridge collapsed. Happened last night in western India. You'll see here people holding on as the bridge starts to sway and then the whole thing plunges to the water below. After the collapse, dozens of people grabbed hold of that mangled bridge, fighting to stay above the water. South Korea has declared a period of national mourning for the victims of a crowd surge during Halloween celebrations in the capital Seoul. The crush happened in a district of the South Korean capital called Itaewon. It is a popular nightlife area of the city and often has large numbers of visitors. The crush happened in a narrow alleyway. Every week, nearly 13 mass shootings. So many, we too often forget those that happened last week or last month. 21 children and teachers killed in Uvalde, Texas. 10 people gunned down in a Buffalo grocery store. Five in Raleigh, four in Memphis, four in Tulsa, six in Sacramento. The list is excruciatingly long. But the scale of the sacrifice made to repel the Russian invaders hasn't been made clear. Updates on casualty figures are rare. In June, a senior Ukrainian official, Mikhailo Podolayak, who advises President Zelensky, said between 100 and 200 Ukrainian soldiers were dying daily. Now, he says between 10,000 and 13,000 Ukrainian troops 
have died in the conflict. He also suggested 100,000 Russian soldiers had been killed, with up to a further 150,000 wounded or missing. I desire to accomplish most of my dreams and objectives this new year. But I don't know where to begin. I definitely need guidance. As you embrace 2023, seek God first, and all your aspirations will be established.